My root grows down into his love. My life is built on him. My trust grows deep, and I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water, fruitful in every season. This year, I grow in all things, more and more like Christ, and my life overflows with miracles and gratitude. Amen. God bless you as you have your seat. If you don't mind, just smile to somebody on your left and on your right, and say, welcome to church. Aha. God bless you. And at the same time, I want us to put our hands together and celebrate a healer. Every time they're on stage, they don't just sing, but they minister. Yeah. So, brethren, I welcome you to this morning's service. And I'm trusting God that today God will liberate somebody in the name of Jesus. Amen. The overarching theme that we have been talking about this month is spiritual understanding. And I bless God for the mention of yes of last Sunday. Engaging spiritual understanding for growth. And I also bless God for that of Wednesday. And if you were here on Wednesday, there is no way that God will not enlighten you on spiritual realities. So today we are going to take it a little bit further. And I'm going to be talking about engaging spiritual principles for daily living. Engaging spiritual principles for daily living. Our text will be taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. 20 to 27. Second Kings chapter 3, 20 to 27. All right. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering, when the grain offering was offered, that suddenly water came by the way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another. Now, therefore, Moab to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites so that they fled before them and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it and they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. But they left the stones of Kiharaset intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Can we read this verse together? Then he took his eldest son, who should have reigned in his place, and offered him as a bond offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel, so they departed from him and returned to their own land. That last sentence in other versions says that Israel departed or Israel withdrew and returned to their own land. Spiritual principles. Man is a spirit living in a body and possessing a soul. I say it again. Man is what? Man is a spirit living in a body and possessing a soul. If you look at me on any day and all you see is this person standing before you, I want to tell you that you have not seen it all. Because the real me or the real you <laughs> is that which cannot be seen. But whether you like it or not, you as an individual that I'm looking at, you are a spirit. Tell your neighbor I'm a spirit. <laughs> and because man is a spirit, there is the need to explain to you that there is what is called the spiritual realm. Just as there's a physical realm that you can see and touch, there is a spiritual realm or a spiritual dimension. In fact, the Bible tells us that the things that were created, we are created by things that do not appear. So there's a spiritual realm where you have 
the spiritual forces, both for good and for evil, interacting. And whether you like it or not, the interaction in the spiritual realm has an effect on us as individuals. What do I mean? If God should open your eyes to see, maybe you look at this crowd here and you say, we are, say, 120. If your eyes are opened, you will understand that we are more than 120 that are here. What am I talking about? There is a spiritual dimension to everything. The spiritual dimension has the angels, it has the demons. It has spirits, it has spiritual interaction, spiritual principles that occur every time that you are alive. And whether you like it or not, the activities in the spiritual realm have an effect on our lives. So, the ability to understand or the ability to know what is going on in the spiritual realm and use it in our daily interaction is spiritual understanding. Is somebody hearing me? For you to be aware that there is a spiritual realm, that life does not just end between you and I, that there is something going on in a realm that your physical eyes cannot see, is spiritual understanding. And for you not to be aware of this fact <laughs> is your own undoing. In the story we read, we see a king that is fighting a war. The war was so intense that he struggled, struggled to break through the walls. But the Bible tells us that when the, when the battle got so intense and he could not prevail, he took his son, his first son, that was to reign in his stead and slew him. That was slew. He offered him as a burnt offering, a sacrifice on the walls. Why did he do that? He did that because he knew that for him to win that war, he had to engage in something spiritual. He had to leave this realm of physical things and go into spirit, the spiritual realm to engage his battle. And what did he do? He provoked a spiritual principle by slaughtering his own son. And after that, the Bible tells us that there was great indignation against Israel to the extent that Israel withdrew. So what am I talking about? There are times... That you have to understand that for you to get what you want is not just physical. There is a spiritual dimension to it. Is somebody hearing me? And that is where spiritual understanding comes in. The man could have asked for more bows and more arrows. He would have asked for more bullets, more missiles, more men. But he found out that no. With his spiritual understanding, he knew that victory in this battle was more than physical Bullets, physical gun, physical ammunition. He had to do something that had control over the physical. And what did he do? He engaged in a spiritual principle. He slaughtered his, only, his, his first son that was to reign in his stead. Hello, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in the Bible where somebody used that same principle and slaughtered his only begotten son so that things could change? Have you heard about it before? Good. So the man was engaging in a type of that same principle because he had to do what needed to be done to change that battle. And as soon as he did that, they said there was great fury against Israel to the extent that Israel had to withdraw and go back. Spiritual principles. Spiritual principles are superior and they rule whether you like it or not. And as individuals, you and I are governed by spiritual principles. If you don't know that, now you know. There is a reason why things are happening in a particular way in your life. Is beyond mere talk. It's beyond what you see. There are things that are going on spiritually that some of us are unaware of. What about a man called Job? Job was on his own, interacting with his family, praying, making sacrifices. But unknown to him, there was a discussion somewhere. Somebody say somewhere. There was a discussion somewhere in the spiritual realm over his future, over his destiny. Did Job know? No. No, he did not. But at the end of that discussion, access was granted to Satan to touch him. And sooner or later, Job began to feel the effect of what happened. Things began to happen. His children died. His wealth crashed. Business crashed. Everything crashed. What was the reason? Was it because of the economy? Was it because of inflation? Was it because of COVID-19? There was a spiritual discussion in the spiritual realm. That was taken on his behalf without his knowing. 
And the effect started to play out in his life. I pray for somebody here. If there's somebody here that is witnessing anything negative in life, any negative pattern, today it is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I said it is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Any discussion that has been held in the spiritual realms against you, against your destiny, that is playing out negatively against your life, today I said it is reserved, it is reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. It is reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe your own experience is unexplained delay. Things that happen to people easily. But when it comes to your turn, it's just delay. It's just dragging. At times, not every time, but at times, it could be as a result of something that is going on spiritually. But it takes spiritual understanding to be able to deal with it and come out successfully. Today, you will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. So quickly, what are the spiritual principles that we need to understand? You see, this thing I'm talking it's not just big grammar. There are things that are around us. Just that for some of us, we may not be aware. We may just be doing our own jelly jelly, like Job. Not knowing that there are spiritual activities around you that have an effect on your life. And until you understand the place of spiritual principles and how to apply them with spiritual understanding, some people will be there and they will remain there. So how do we get spiritual understanding? By faith. By faith. Hebrews 11.3, can we see that? Hebrews 11.3, can you put it up? Yes. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Stop. Again, start. Stop. Can we start again? That what? Thank you. How do we understand things that happened before we were born? <laughs> were you there? By faith. Through faith, you gain spiritual understanding of things that happened that you did not even see. By faith. At the time they were writing this, were the world created or not? The world had been created and moved how many years? But he said, by faith, we understand. There is an understanding that is beyond normal academics. There is an understanding that is beyond human reasoning. That is spiritual understanding. Is somebody hearing me? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, it says, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart and do not what? Lean not on your own understanding. So there is your own understanding. There is a way you see things. There is a way you understand. But hello, can I tell you sir, that your own understanding is inadequate in the matter to help you. There is a way you, you interpret things. <laughs> there is a way you analyze things. Particularly for those that, 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 are, that have been to school, that have studied so much. So when anything happens, you interpret it based on the knowledge and the wisdom around you. But that scripture is telling us that there is an understanding that is greater than your physical understanding. That is spiritual understanding and it comes by faith. How does spiritual understanding come? By knowing God's will. God's will. Colossians 1.9. We've read it before, but just look at it in the B part. Colossians 1.9. It says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled. With what? Say it. The knowledge of his will. God has a will. Tell your neighbor God has a will. God's will is his word in the Bible. But knowledge of that his will gives spiritual understanding. Because you begin to understand what God wants. You begin to know what God likes and what God hates. For instance, God says, I hate divorce. So if you come to that juncture, you know that this is not his will. But if you cannot help yourself, so be it. So knowledge of his will gives us spiritual understanding. And when you talk about his will, there is his sovereign will. For instance, God wants everybody to be saved. But there is his will for you, which is what you must strive to understand. When you know God's will for yourself, then you begin to get spiritual understanding. What am I talking about? Jesus Christ knew that the will of God for his life was that at some point, he will go to Jerusalem, he will be killed. 
He knew it. He knew that that is why he came. So nobody was going to bamboozle him about that because he knew. But a time came when he was about to enter into Jerusalem. And he told his disciples that I'm going to Jerusalem now where the Son of Man will be killed. And Peter said, it will not happen. <laughs> he said, it will not happen. No, you, ah, rather than you being killed, I will die for you. <laughs> See, there are things that are beyond the natural, that are difficult to explain natural terms. If, for instance, Pastor K says, Church, it has finally reached a point in time where I'm going to obey God's will, and God's will is that I move to Sudan. The inner court church, <laughs> the inner court church we move to Sudan, we plant a church, myself, my lovely wife, we'll go there. <laughs> I'm not even finished talking. The way you're looking at me, I already know the answer in your heart. <laughs> so you say, never. How? Sudan. Explain. <laughs> That's how it was. <laughs> Somebody say Canada. <laughs> if Pastor can say, the church moved to Canada, how many of us will follow him? Uh, many of us will say, I want to be an usher. <laughs> so because, even before you go, let me go first and go and, and, go and survey the land. <laughs> So when Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem and I will die, you can understand how Peter felt. He said, this will never happen. But what did Jesus Christ say? Get thee behind me. See, there is a will of God for your life that is unknown to man. No matter how man reasons it, they cannot explain it. Only God that can explain it. There is a will of God that directs your life. But for you not to know that will is an error. Because once you know that will of God for yourself, you begin to gain spiritual understanding. How? Because you know what is essential, you know what is not essential. You know what is important and what is not important. And when what is not important goes, comes to your way, you're able to push it aside for the sake of the important. Is somebody hearing me? So, we begin to understand spiritual things through his will. Now, what are these spiritual principles that we must understand? There are things that happen around us that I must tell you about. And from today, you begin to understand that there are spiritual attachments to these things I'm talking about. Number one is your words. Your words. Do you know that your words are spirit? Just Christ said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. <laughs> How? But I've been speaking. Did any spirit jump from my mouth? But I must let you know that one spiritual principle that you must realize in your life is that your words are spiritual. With this tongue, the tongue is very, very little and soft. But the things that this tongue can create, it can cause wars. How many of us agree with that? Some wars today are as a result of what somebody said. But as soon as he said it, the spirit behind those words begins to move into activity and begins to cause all kinds of things. People are divorced today. Marriages are scattered today. Not because they hate each other, but because of what he said, what she said. People are no longer on talking terms today. Why? Because of what you said and what you did not say. Matthew 12, 37. Can we look at it? Matthew 12, 37. It says, by your words, thou shalt be justified. And by your words, what will happen? Thou shalt be condemned. Because in the realm of the spirit, your words are spiritual. And for you not to understand the spiritual principle is a problem. King Herod promised his daughter something. And he had opened his mind. He said, ask anything and I will give to you. And by the time she had finished dancing in front of him, by the time she had been entertaining him, and the time came for her to make her request. And he said, what do you want? Ask. <laughs> she said, I want the head of John the Baptist. Ask me this question. Why did he not say no? <laughs> that thing you have asked is off. <laughs> it's not on the list. Ask something else. Why he said, no, 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 no. I know I told you to ask, but I didn't tell you to ask up to this. Because he was bound by his words. 
Brethren, do you know that the things that come out from your mouth are spirits? With your mouth, you kill. With your mouth, you destroy. With your mouth, you build up. With your mouth, you bring life. And the tragedy is that some of us, with our mouth, we bring ourselves down. With our mouth, we kill ourselves. Because you just proclaim and look at everything and analyze. And you give a verdict upon your life. You say, I am sick. I am broke. I am poor. <laughs> when you say that, who can help you? Why? Because by your words, what will happen? You can be justified and by your words, we shall be condemned. So, spiritually, we condemn ourselves with our words. The one that even got me thinking was what happened in the scenario in the book of Genesis chapter 30 between Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. Jacob has supplanted his brother and collected his blessing from the father. That's all right. So the father blessed him, pronounced it on him, and he went his way. Now, Esau came and found that, that his blessing has been taken away. He cried. He complained. He begged. And the father said, I have blessed him. Then in verse 38 of that Genesis 30, Esau said something that is still, is still running in my heart. He said, don't you have one blessing for me. This thing that we call blessing, they are words though. So it's not property that you say, come and sign. So you say he has signed everything and he has taken everything away. No. <laughs> they are words. So if you could pronounce it on, 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 on Jacob, why can't you pronounce it? Why can't you reverse it? Or you say, no, 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 no. The blessing that I pronounce on that guy, because he's the, <laughs> the former one guy, I take it back and I put it on you. No way. He has said it, he has said it. And whether that guy supplanted or not, he had been blessed, he had been blessed, and he ran with it. Did he manifest in his life? Yes. So the real owner of the blessing came now, and the man said, because of what I have said, and you know those, when they talk, they talk from their bowels. They don't just talk anyhow. Because of what I have pronounced, I cannot bring it back and repronounce. Listen to me. As he said it, a spiritual force followed that word. And began to activate and work things out in Jacob's life. Words. <laughs> Words. Not will. A will is a document signed. And when you go say, see the will. But this one, there was no written document, not nothing tangible, just words. He said it. Husbands, there are times you need to speak over your wife. When my wife at times she's feeling ill, forget that we play. We do arm wrestling, we do everything. She recognizes authority and says, pray for me. Nine times out of ten, when I pray, she gets healed. It is words. I didn't give her uh, chloroquine. <laughs> I didn't give her any form of injection or medication. It is my mouth. When you speak over your child, I know somebody that tells the children, say, I brought you into this land. They traveled overseas. He said, in this land, you are going to be the prime minister. So you are going to be known all over this land. You are going to be wealthy. In another land. He says it. And once he says it, the spirit goes with those words. And they begin to perform. How many of you know that there are spiritual forces that God has put on your behalf? How many of you are aware of that? They are called angels. Angels are ministering spirits. And one of the things they do is they wait for you to issue a command. The situation comes, you don't issue any command, it will remain there. The situation comes, you, you issue a negative command, it will go the other way around. But it comes and you speak the word of God. When Joshua was about to face the battle of Jericho, and he stood, in the morning he stood and he was gazing. The Bible said that he saw a man. How many of us remember that in our Bible? And he asked the man, who are you? Are you for us? Or are you for them? Oh God, the man gave a very, very interesting answer that I will never forget. The man said, nay. I am not for you. Neither am I for the enemy. I am here as the captain of the host of God. So you know what he was telling him? 
I'm not here for you. I'm not here for them. I'm here for God. If you are on God's side, you will win. If you are not on God's side, you will fail. So I counsel you, if you have sense at all, if you have spiritual understanding, jump and be on God's side. So that's how you will win. The angels are not interested in your words. Mere talk. Mouth that you used to eat, loy, loy. You used to eat uh, <laughs> abacha. <used> to... <laughs> what he wants to hear from you is what God has said. When you give him what God has said, he takes that word and he begins to run with it. I give you 30 seconds. Can you say something over your life now? 30 seconds. Issue that command now over your life. These are spiritual realities, spiritual understanding. Say it and reverse. Can you reverse something? Can you reverse something? Just reverse something. Reverse something. Just reverse it. Just try it out. In Jesus' name. The next one we're going to talk about is money. Somebody say money. <laughs> mm. Do you know that there's a spirit behind money? I'm talking about spiritual understanding. Okay, I have one crumpled note here. For those that can see this, what is this? <laughs> 500 naira. Now, this is paper. It's paper. Now, if this, my brother, is sad, assuming, <laughs> assuming he's sad, he's not happy. And I meet him, I say, Louis, what's up? And he say, no, 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 no. Pastor, I beg, I need, I need spiritual intervention. And I say, okay, let me hug you. And I hug him. So he say, okay, that's nice. I said, okay, let me bless you. I lay my hands. I said, you are blessed. You are blessed. Say, just say that's nice. But if I give him this thing, if I give, if I give him that thing, see, you're already clapping. <laughs> and you, <laughs> and you think that money is. I mean, everything about money is contained in that paper. You are making a big mistake. Oops, please sit down. I didn't ask you to stand up. Sorry. You think that everything in money is confined to that little paper that they print in Abuja? Or where do they mint it again? There is more to it than you know. There is a spirit that follows money. Money on its own is not good, it's not bad, it's on its own jelly. But there is a way you will use it and your attitude to it that you open the door for spiritual activity. When you keep and keep and withhold more than you need, the Bible says that you are inviting a spirit called poverty. Poverty will visit that guy. It may not be poverty as in lack of money, but somewhere in that person's life, something will be missing because you have activated a spiritual principle. You have called them. They look at you and say, they see greed. Ah, this guy is greedy. Let's get there. <laughs> greed attracts them. And they begin to work on that person's life. They begin to work on that person. You get more money, you keep more, but you find out that that person, there is something in that person's life that is, that is missing. I'm just saying like that. They have money. But when you interact with them, you find out that there is, a, there, is, there is a lack of joy. For some of them, there is a lack of peace. See, this paper that I gave to this man, people will kill to have more of it. True of us. People will sell. Their, uh, uh, was it not in the news the other day that the woman took her child to my one market? <laughs> took her child to my one market. Not to shop, to sell. So people are selling sugar, people are selling cement. She's selling her son. In Port Harcourt, this year. Why? Because she wants money. Why do girls do wrongs? Some of these girls that do wrongs, some of them are educated. They're in school. Some of them are even from wealthy homes. Hello? Some of them are from wealthy homes, well-to-do, well-brought-up. 
Why do they, when I say runs, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the one of Usain Bolt. <laughs> money. Money. And the things that money can get. Prestige. Good looks. Nice clothes. Jewelry. I mind you, it's not only girls that are in this matter, or even boys are in this matter too. Hello. <laughs> One of them is in jail right now. They say he was praying money anyhow. If you know, you know. <laughs> he said she is now a boy. Or he's now a girl. Or he's now a him. Or she. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> no, they said you go explain, Tyre. <laughs> when they ask, I say, boy, I guess I'm going to say, how you're going, yes, you go explain, Tyre. <laughs> But it's because of what this paper can do. Jesus said, you cannot serve me. You cannot serve God and serve mammon. Mammon. Mammon is the cord, small g, that is attached to wealth creation. Mammon. Mammon is so powerful that it will dictate what you can do and what you cannot do. Mammon. Mammon will tell you when it's enough and when it's not enough. That is mammon. So Jesus can say, if you're going to serve me, is that you serve me or you serve that? You cannot mix the two. Mammon is where we make a girl leave her hostel in the night and go and stand on the road so that she will have money. Mammon is what will make a guy go and sell his soul and get some money and he's given a guaranteed lifetime that he's not going to live more than three years. And for those three years, he'll be sacrificing members of his family. And he goes to buy an S class, G or GLK, name it, just for three years. It's mammon that is controlling. I you saying money, there is no spirit behind money. Money is spiritual. But the Bible tells us about the principle of sowing and reaping. It says, He that soweth sparingly, how will he reap? And he that soweth bountifully, what will happen? He said, when you honor God with your tithes, he said, I will rebuke what? The devourer. For you. So there is something they call the devourers. There is something called devourer. He says, that is my great army. So in other words, God can be aware that the devourers are working in this person's life. <laughs> he said, it's my army. I know, I've seen it there. But because you have violated the spiritual principle, they have a right to be there and doing what they want. So just like that king of Moab, there is what to do to stop nonsense. Spiritual understanding will shine that light. 1 Timothy 6.10. 1 Timothy 6.10, put it there. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. That is what it says. The love of money is the root of all evil. And you can read 2 Corinthians 9, 6 at your own time. The next one I'm going to talk about is sex. I hope I don't shake some tables. <laughs> there is a spirit behind sex. God created sex to be enjoyed within the confine of marriage. But there is a dimension that man will take sex to that you now open the doors for spiritual affliction. It takes spiritual understanding to know what is right, what is wrong, what is his will, and what is not his will. Sex now is so strong that without the appearance of sex, even in movies or musicals, it is looked at as empty. So sex is now something that is so cheap that you can buy on the streets. As cheap as it is, as common as it looks like, there is a spirit behind sex that if you don't understand, can begin to work against an individual negatively. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Some time ago, I was discussing with a lady when we were in youth service. We attended the same school. And I asked her about her relationship with a certain friend of mine that she was involved with. And she said, well, there's nothing really happened. Yes, we're friends. We did it for, for a long time. But, you know, it's just, it's just sex and that was all. <laughs> nothing serious. Just sex, that was all. <laughs> just sex. 
And you see, a lot of us are being fooled by that same thing. You say it's just sex, nothing. There's nothing happening. <laughs> nothing they happen. We're just having sex. Even some married people. A married woman, we have a guy somewhere. And they call it certain names that I cannot, you know, say on the altar. But you ask them, what's your relation with that guy? They say, nothing, it's just sex. Anytime I need it, I just call him, I will meet somewhere, and it's just sex, nothing. I'm not going to marry him, I'm not going to <laughs> get married. It's just sex, it's just sex. It's not just sex. It is not just sex. You see, when the Bible tells you to flee fornication, <laughs> there, 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 there is something there. Because he knows that sex, when you turn it around the opposite way, has some spiritual connotation. Do you know, according to the Bible, that anyone you join yourself with, you become one with that person? Look at 1 Corinthians 6.16. 1 Corinthians 6.16. It says, or do you not know that he who is joined to an harlot is what? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. So do you know the implication of that? Let me tell you. Whenever a man and a woman have sex, there is something that the man deposits in the woman. That the man deposits part of himself in the woman. So when a woman has sex with the A, B, C, D, E, F, <laughs> She is a combination of all the alphabets. <laughs> and you say it's just sex. When you have sex with another person, you become one with that person, whether it's your husband or your wife. If it's with your spouse, you become one. That's okay. So that's why they say, ah, sir, you are married, you are beginning to look like your wife, your wife is beginning to look like you. That's because there is something going on. Have you heard people talk about that before? Because there is something going on between them. But because they are married, it's okay. But how about those that are not married? Who do you look like? A or B or C or D? Uh -huh. And maybe A is one ragamuffin that you just met. That you are drunk and you say it's just sex. You have the opposite of one ragamuffin. Then B is one guy. I mean, I didn't know the day. Only God knows how you be thinking. Because you have deposits of so many people. And you say it's just sex. Because of sex, some people will do what they swore that they will never do just because of sex. Lecturers are in jail today because they want to make money or they want gratification for a favor. And the only place they can seek gratification is sex. Why don't they ask for money? They say, no, it's sex you want. That's to show you how powerful this I can go on and on and on and on. But because of my time, I, won't have to, I don't have much time. But bro, what I'm telling you, brother and sister, is that there is a spirit behind this thing. And sex is spiritual. Read Proverbs chapter 6, you will have understanding. Proverbs chapter 6 tells us that a man that has an affair or has sex with a whorish woman, a whore, or a daughter's woman, lacks understanding. Because the end thereof is a pit, is destruction. That is what he says. That is what he says. So a man that is having an adulterous affair, the Bible says he doesn't even have understanding, talking about spiritual understanding. He's gone. Because he does not know that beyond the physical pleasure, there is a spiritual problem that is brewing up. And let me just tell you, whenever you begin to see people manifest those problems. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's coming from. There is this guy that I know very promiscuous. Because he's living in another town apart from his family. So he feels that he has the right to do what he likes. And almost every day you see different women coming to see him. And all of a sudden, we didn't see this guy again. And we were wondering what was going on. Till one day, I now heard that. They brought him in the dead of the night, and they rushed him into his apartment. He could not stand. Why? He had stroke. 
Okay, where is the stroke coming from? Is it medical? Is it spiritual? Is it sexual? Is it, we don't know. But a man that has that kind of uh, lifestyle, <laughs> when he has problems, you go explain tire. Did he sleep with the wrong person? Did he sleep with another man's wife? Did he sleep with an Ogbanje? Did he sleep with a mama's spirit? We don't know. This thing is a very serious matter. And a lot of people have mortgaged their future. A lot of men, responsible, do I say responsible? Respectful men have been turned to a loaf of bread because of sex. There is a spirit behind it. There is a spirit behind it. You may not be able to explain, my brothers and my sisters. You may not be able, with your common sense, to, to plot the graph. But if you have any spiritual understanding, you will know that there are no go areas. So I counsel you, drink water from your own system. Drink water from your own fountain. Drink water from your own fountain and be satisfied with it. If she's fat, like it. If she's slim, it's your own. If she's short, good. If she's dark, dark and lovely. But make sure that if you are drinking, you are drinking from your own system. Is somebody understanding me? Yes, Spiritual principles. These things happen to us every day. They are around us. But it is understanding that will allow us to know where to draw the line and how to reason about this thing spiritually. I pray that God will open your eyes so that you begin to see what is going on in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will open your eyes and enlighten your own understanding and give you spiritual knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will give you wisdom in his will so that you know what to do and what not to do and what to do when there is problem in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will not be stranded, neither will you be ignorant in anything that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritual principles. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is consecration. That is where we stop. Consecration. What is consecration? Consecration is the art of keeping yourself apart for divine use. Consecration. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says that all things may be lawful, but not all things are expedient. As a child of God, you need to know where to draw the line. You need to know what is allowed and what is not allowed. If you look at the life of a man called Samson, when he was born, he was told that there are certain things that he should not do to preserve his consecration as a Nazarite. You that you are a born-again Christian, you are special and you are a unique tribe to God. There are things that are allowed and there are things that should not be allowed in your life. Even if others are doing it, yes. But for you, it must not be so. When you break your consecration, you open yourself to spiritual attack. And why do you break your spiritual consecration? Association. Not every association belongs, not every, not every association that you must join. Not every conversation you must contribute to. It's not everything you must eat or drink. It's not everywhere you must go to. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived. What? Evil com communication, what does it do? Corrupts good manners. It can corrupt your consecration. An open room for the enemy to afflict. So at times... When we are suffering from afflictions, we may not know where it's coming from. Maybe we have broken our consecration. See, there are some of you that God has marked as his own. Some of you know it, some of you do not know it. But my prayer for you is that you will know where to draw the line. There are people's destinies, great destinies that have been aborted because they broke their consecration. People in the negative spiritual, they tell them, do not eat oil. They will not eat oil. They say when you are entering into, have you seen people, they want to enter into a room, they enter from, with their back like this. 
Because they tell you that the day you will enter from the front, there is a problem. But they keep it because there is something they are waiting for. If people in that realm can do that, how much more you? If people in that realm can keep themselves, some people say they will not have sex for one year, two years, even with their wife, just because of something that they want to get, and they do that, how much more you? So my counsel to us today is that wherever you find yourself, keep your consecration. Keep what? Your consecration. Shall we rise up to our feet? You will talk to God about what I have said. Whether it's about the principle of your words or your money or your consecration or sex, you will talk to God. First prayer is that, Lord, wherever I have missed it, Father, restore me. I would like to pray that prayer. With all, are you ready to be honest and talk to God? Father, wherever I have missed it, spiritually restore me. Wherever I've missed it, Lord, restore me. <laughs> Where I've missed it in terms of my money. We have opened room for spiritual affliction in my finances, in my consecration. Restore me. Wherever I've spoken things that I should not say and is afflicting me, Lord, restore me. <laughs>